What's going on guys, Billy here, and let me just say right off the bat that I don't think I've enjoyed flying a drone with a remote controller more than I have with DJI's RC Plus here. This remote here was designed specifically for the brand new Matrice 30 with compatibility for the M300 being added later. This is the first true enterprise designed remote for DJI's commercial drones as all the previous remotes were just sourced from consumer drones and were sometimes modified in a couple of different ways. With that said, this remote has a lot going on so I figured that it deserved its own video to go over what it can do, share some of my favorite features, and give you my thoughts on what it's like flying with this remote. Now we first have to touch on size and weight, because sure it's great we've got this big controller with a big bright screen, a bunch of custom buttons and fancy switches, but none of that matters if the controller is too heavy or too large to fly with because then it just becomes uncomfortable and after flying for long periods of time, it can become really fatiguing. I'm happy to report that despite its size, it is still ergonomically a joy to fly with. The way that the screen is positioned just above where you rest your hands makes for easy viewing of the display and actually is more comfortable on the neck so you aren't hunching over so much. Also, the on the back side of the remote controller gives you great places to rest your fingers so you can access all the buttons without having to switch your grip you can just use your pointer your middle or your index finger to hit all the buttons on the back side the weight is also in my opinion a non-issue it's a little bit heavier than the rc pro but again you've got a lot more going on here with a bigger screen and more switches the overall build quality is also of course top notch as you'd expect from a dji remote with rubber grips high quality plastic and an overall sturdy build so yeah overall ergonomically the rc plus really is a joy to fly with it fits really well in the hands as i mentioned it's really comfortable here on the grips it kind of has these little indents here where they rest on your index finger and again it's really comfortable all your fingers reach all the buttons all the way around the only time you'd ever need to really take your hand off the remote controller to interact with it is if you're going to be touching here on the screen but speaking of all of these buttons there are plenty to go around here on the controller so with that said what i want to do now is do a quick overview of the remote controller so that you can learn how this works so the main focal point here is obviously the screen, which is the largest and brightest screen that DJI has put into a remote controller. It's a 1200 nit 7 inch panel with a resolution of 1080p, so there's plenty of screen real estate to view your flight live as you fly and the brightness is high enough to cut through the bright sunlight. The screen can also maintain 1200 nits without any dimming, which is key. Now working our way from top to bottom in the top left, we have our control button, which we'll touch on more here in just a second, and this orange button in the top right which is our pause button so you can use this to pause an automated flight mode or return to home for example just underneath of this is of course our control sticks which are removable and have this thin rubber material protecting the base that helps keep water and debris out of the remote controller now on either side of the screen there are a total of six buttons three on each side which act as toggles for commands within the pilot app so when you're connected to the drone you'll be able to say zoom in or quickly switch between camera views now just next to the left set of toggle buttons is our back button to navigate through the Android operating system while our 5D customizable button sits here just next to the right set of toggle buttons. So within the pilot app, we can customize the command when you push this button in each different direction. Moving down at the bottom here, we have our return to home button on the left and the power button on the right. We of course have the status LEDs that sit here just in the middle and I've got to mention these forward facing speakers which honestly impress me. I know it might sound dumb to comment on speakers but on most of these remotes from DJI the speaker is placed in the back towards the middle so all the noise that comes from them is low and muffled. These forward facing speakers though are crisp and clear so you can easily hear commands and other audio prompts. Now flipping around to the back of the remote on the left side is our record button, flight mode switch, a wheel to pitch the gimbal up and down, and our C3 and C1 custom buttons. On the opposite side is the shutter button, a wheel to pan the gimbal left and right, a wheel to adjust zoom, and the C2 custom button. With how my fingers fit when flying, my ring finger sits on the back custom buttons, my middle finger sits on the middle section of buttons and wheels, and my pointer finger controls this top group of controls comfortably. Now in the middle here is our available ports all covered by weather sealed flaps. From left to right we have room for a micro SD card, a USB-A port, a full-sized HDMI port, and a USB-C port. These antennas back here are also removable for potential upgrades down the line for a better connection and more range. Now, as if you thought that is everything, there is one more hardware feature about this remote controller, and that is this back door, which houses a spot for a removable battery, which gives you the best of both worlds. You still get up to three hours and 18 minutes of usage with the internal battery, but you can extend that to approximately six hours by adding the external battery. This gives you the benefit of being able 
able to feed the remote with batteries for constant flying while still remaining on in between battery charges thanks to the internal battery. Whew. All right, so I feel like that was a marathon to get through, but of course this is one of DJI's most intricate drone remote controllers that they have ever come out with. There is a lot to unpack about it, and hopefully after we've now covered all of the different things that are available here on the controller, you get a better understanding of what to expect if you potentially want to pick this up for one of your enterprise drones. And I know that at first it can feel a little bit overwhelming, but quite frankly, I've gotten used to it and it's now like my preferred way to fly drones. I wish that I could use this to say fly my Mavic 3 because right from here, right from this grip, I can access everything I need to from the L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, R3 buttons to the return to home, the back navigation button, all these custom buttons on the back. The grip is really comfortable. Now, I said I was going to talk a little bit more about this control button here at the top. It's really simple. Basically, when you're connecting two remote controllers to the same drone, whoever's button is green has control of the drone, and whoever has a red button has no control over the drone. And this is really good because in previous drones, like say with the M300, when you wanted to switch between who was say the primary remote controller of the drone, uh, you had to like dig through the software and make changes that way. But now, being able to just do it from a button and actually have a command Command, or I guess like a physical, uh, you know, indicator that you have control is really good. So that's a good button to add here if you plan on having two people fly the same drone. Now I want to quickly dive inside of the remote to cover a few loose end specs. This remote is running Android 10. It's running AlcuSync 3 Enterprise with a quad antenna, right? Two of which, as I mentioned, are removable. There's also the ability to add a cellular connection to the remote for loading content remotely and connecting to the drone through 4G, which unfortunately won't be launching here in the United States due to FAA regulation. It's also IP54 water and dust proof, so remember how it had waterproof flaps to cover the ports and the thin rubber piece protecting the sticks. We already touched on battery life being up to six hours combined with the external battery and the charge time is fairly quick through the 65 watt input on the USB-C port. Now a big plus that comes with using the RC Plus here is that it has the Pilot 2 application loaded on it. So if we slide a screen recording in here, you'll notice that this app looks a lot different than the original Pilot application. In my opinion, it's better laid out and I think that most of the changes were generally a user interface upgrade. There are a couple of brand new features features in here, but generally I think the biggest upgrade from Pilot 1 to Pilot 2 is just the way that it looks. And they kind of did this upgrade so that it could be more in line with say the DJI Fly application. This reminds me a lot of that same user interface, whereas the Pilot app reminded me of the older Go application. So they're kind of like bringing this up to speed here in terms of what they offer on the consumer side. So this is the first screen that you see here. You can access things like your flight route, your album, so the photos that you've taken. You can see it like some lessons with your academy. You can look uh, through Flight Hub at your cloud service and once you log in, that'll be a whole other separate video. Uh, you can check on your location. So, you know, if I want to click on there, it'd bring up the map. Uh, also, this is running a full-fledged version of Android. So like I could swipe up and just go back to the home screen here. I could access my files. I could go into some of the screen recordings that I've taken. Um, I could just swipe back. I could go to Firefox, load up a web page here, for example. So this is a full-fledged Android tablet built into the remote controller, which is nice. That's of course why I can screen record. You can pull it down, access all of your notifications from here, change your brightness, do all of those things. So it's got a lot of great features built in in that regard. But of course, we're talking about the DJI Pilot app here. Um, so from here, uh, you know, really the big thing that we're going to kind of go through is the actual interface that you'll see when flying the drone. If you tap up in the top right corner here, just as a quick little side note, this is your UAV health management system. So it's nice to come in here and see all of the different components that make up your drone and see, you know, the status of them. So all of your propulsion stuff, right? It's normal. Your avionics, vision positioning, the image transmission, yada, yada, yada. So you guys understand. Um, so if we want to actually get into the actual drone here, we'll enter the camera view in the bottom right. We first have this pre-flight check, which was also available in that pilot application, the Pilot One app. And this is basically like a, a top-down view of everything in regards to the drone. You can see, um, you know, the status of your obstacle avoidance sensors. You can see if your home point is set. You can see what your max altitude is set to. You can see the... Uh, you know, battery percent of uh, the battery percentage of your drone and your remote controller. So you can change everything right from the screen, which is awesome. It's kind of like a top-down view to look and say, everything's good. Let's fly. We're going to hit the X 
and now we're here in our main flight screen now this of course is in my garage you actually might be able to hear the humming of the drone the fan sitting out there um, but yeah the interface here is nice and clean right now we're just looking at the FPV camera here so we can't do any pitching up and down but if we tap on the bottom right corner this brings up our M30T camera so now we could pitch the camera up and down using the back scroll wheel here and like I mentioned down here at the bottom we have these toggles the R1 R2 R3 button the L1 L2 L3 um, and you know just from here we're able to flip to the IR camera we can flip to the zoom camera back to the wide camera um, if we go to IR we can tap on side by side up in the top and see this side by side view um, we're able to go and pull up the FPV camera full screen, switch back to the M30T camera. If we're in our zoom camera, we can uh, zoom in and then zoom in, which of course from my garage, so it doesn't really look all that good. But yeah, so these toggle buttons down here are really great. Uh, and then from here, you know, the rest of the app layout kind of has all of your status stuff at the top. So we can tap in the top left corner, see some of the different notifications that come through. We can tap in the middle here to bring down that pre-flight checklist again. And in the top right corner, we can see the status of our RTK, um, our RTK antennas. We can see how many satellites are connected to the drone, the connection status between our remote controller and the drone, as well as the battery life for both of the batteries sitting there in the uh, in the drone. And we can also pull down um, some specific statistics or specific information about each battery by tapping on them. Um, you know, on the right side, we can switch between some different photo and video modes. We can do photo or video. We can be shooting, say, uh, you know, intelligent photos. We can shoot high res grid photos. If we're shooting video, we pretty much only have the option to shoot 1080p or 4K video. And then you can get a little bit more into the weeds and change like your video format. You can choose whether or not you're going to save video from your current view, from the wide camera, the zoom camera, or the infrared camera. So there's not many camera settings to change in here. I mean, it's not like a Mavic 3 where you're going to be changing like the image resolution whether you want to shoot jpeg raw what color profile so there's none of that in here but it's just the bare minimum basics that you need and of course everything that you're going to want to change all the settings are available by tapping up in the top right corner you can view your flight controller settings the obstacle avoidance sense uh, the obstacle avoidance settings the remote controller settings your transmission system settings your aircraft battery settings your gimbal settings your rtk settings and you have a general settings menu at the bottom so the pilot application uh the pilot 2 app here really is just a reskinned version of the the first version of the pilot application there really isn't a whole lot different unless you're say using flight hub 2 in which that's built into the pilot 2 application here but other than that they kind of ported all the same features from the pilot 1 app over to the pilot 2 app but now it looks a lot more pretty now we've already kind of sprinkled in some talk about the ergonomics of this remote controller like its size and weight we also kind of talked about how the hands fit here on the grips but I want to dive a little bit deeper into the ergonomics we looked at all of the fancy buttons and the custom switches and of course the build quality is top notch as you would come to expect from a DJI remote controller by now especially one for their enterprise drones but just take a look at the width of this controller it is much wider than any remote controller that I've used and it's probably the widest remote controller that DJI has made period the reason that I bring this up is because it's taken me a little bit longer to get used to the RC plus here than usual I mean when we look at other DJI remote controllers say the RCN one here it's one of the smaller remotes that they've made my hands almost overlap on the back here this was comfortable to fly with it wasn't too small to the point where I felt cramped but also it was easy to maneuver with one hand I could take my hand off I can adjust settings on the screen I could put it down by my side no problem whatsoever the same goes for the RC Pro it's a little bit wider with the built-in screen but again very comfortable to hold it's lightweight it's not too wide to the point where I could take one hand off interact with the screen put it down by my side and all of this also goes for even the phantom remote controller I mean this thing is a massive brick but the way that it's laid out it's very ergonomically comfortable I can open up the tablet mount and I could easily maneuver and you know have this in one hand without saying oh man this is too heavy and the reason I bring this up is because when we've got the RC plus here and we're holding it if I want to take my hand off the controller it like droops right down <laughs> So with this width, it makes it difficult to try and reach up and touch the screen. That's why I would say out of all the remotes that I have used from DJI, this is the first one that I would say it is a must to use a lanyard to help balance the weight. The three custom buttons and the R1, R2, R3, and L1, L2, A3 buttons are also a huge help as you don't have to interact with the screen as much as you would imagine. You can switch between cameras, pull up the map and the FPV camera, and zoom in directly from these buttons. So touching the screen is mostly done for changing settings and reviewing files. 
styles. I learned very quickly that you need to further support the side when you want to take one hand off of the controller to change something on the screen. Uh, it happened in my first flight video. I nearly lost the controller out of my hands. It would have been good to drop this thing because it is fairly expensive, but it's built well. So I think that it could have handled a drop from say four feet in the air. So with that said, I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover here regarding the RC Plus. It of course is DJI's most advanced remote controller. When we look at the RC Pro, look at it. But I think that it's for the best, right? I mean, when you're using a drone like the M30T, an enterprise class drone, there's a lot of different controls that go into flying the drone between the camera and the drone operation. So being able to have these custom buttons to change things on the fly to zoom in and switch cameras really does make the operation of the drone a whole lot easier, all thanks to this remote controller. So if you guys have any questions on the RC Plus, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.